This is the Climate and Energy Education Demonstrator, a tool developed to allow you to explore climate and energy variables from historical data to future projections. This tool will show you how the main functions of the demonstrator works and give some examples of how it can be used in a learning environment. When the tool first loads, you are presented with a globe showing the latest historical average annual temperature for Europe, instinctively showing blues for cooler areas and reds for warmer ones. Under the variable icons, you can change how the data is displayed on the map and on the graph with these filters. For the currently displayed variable, you can also download the data as a CSV file and a PDF fact sheet which gives you interesting information, facts, a mini case study and glossary. During this demo, you'll see some of these features in action, but let's start by showing you how we can get an even finer spatial scale to look at temperature spatial patterns across Europe. The pattern of average annual temperatures has become even clearer, and you can even see the differences within countries very, very clearly. When we move the mouse cursor to hover over an area, its data point will pop up as a tooltip. The legend in the bottom right is also dynamic and has been designed to interpret the map. Notice as I move the mouse cursor over the map, an area's data value appears in the legend over the corresponding color category. This feature will help users to understand how Coropef mapping works, and this demonstrates that the tool can be used to practice graphical skills, as well as messages that come from analyzing the data itself. Let's have a closer look at, here in the bottom right at one of the most powerful but simple functions of the tool, the slider. Notice that the left side is colored and the right side is hashed. That's because the tool can cycle through historical data currently 1979 to 2016, but also onto projected data onto the future and mock climate models up to 2100. In one simple click or drag to the end of the slider, we can learn one very important message. Ready? Keep an eye on the map. Notice how there are fewer blues and more reds and even darker reds on the map. Instinctively, we can tell from the map that Europe is projected to warm during this century. This map is now showing projected annual average temperatures for 2100 under a high carbon emission scenario. Again, just using a single click, we can explore changes to a deeper level. Let's take the Swiss Alps, for instance. Now the graph is showing how the selected variable changes in time from recent past into the future. And lo and behold, it only needs a quick glance to see that indeed warming is not only expected to take place, but the historical record represented by the orange line clearly shows that warming has already been occurring. The blue and purple lines show the changes in temperature based on climate models, purple under a high carbon emission scenario and blue a low carbon emission scenario. You'll notice there is some information above the graph, giving you some highlight figures. The temperature for the Swiss Alps averaging out the whole temperature record between 1981 and 2010 was 3.36 degrees Celsius. We call this the long term mean, and you can see that represented by the dashed orange line on the graph. But no matter what the emission scenario, low or high, you can see those blue and purple lines rise above that average figure. The tool can display more than just temperature, it can plot a number of other climate variables and some energy ones too. The other variables are wind speed at 10 meters in height, total precipitation, solar radiation, solar PV energy, electricity demand, and wind energy. Let's have a quick look at one of the energy variables, electricity demand. Here we can see the historical patterns of electricity demands across Europe and what they are projected to be based on different energy scenarios. The ability to change the temporal scale for any one of the climate and energy variables can help us to explore patterns even further. Changing from annual to seasonal, for example, shows us how electricity demand changes between different seasons, and this can help spark investigations on why this might be the case. Dragging over an area of a graph allows you to zoom in and explore the differences in data a little bit more closely. So, those are the basics, and I think you'll agree that even though we are yet to play around with other variables, options and filters, you can already learn quite a lot. So, what might this learning look like? Well, the tool is designed to allow teachers to set their own learning objectives. 
It is essentially a geographical information system, or GIS, and so lends itself perfectly to inquiry-based learning in particular. So let's have a think about this inquiry question. Will extreme weather events today become the norm in the future? Now, one approach to this question is to look at the data from one or more extreme weather events that students may have studied. Since the tool allows us to explore historical data on a daily scale, we can see their signals clearly on both the map and the graph. The 2003 European heatwave, for example, was exceptional and deadly, resulting in 70,000 deaths, with the country of France suffering particularly. What is worth noting, and really quite incredible, is that these are average temperatures for each 24-hour period during the heatwave. So it includes the relative cool of nighttime. In fact, daytime temperatures broke 40 degrees Celsius in France. But could this abnormal extreme weather event, such as heat waves like this, ever become normal in the future? Well, let's average out the temperatures by season and look particularly at summer. There is that summer of 2003. Wow, that is a very clear extreme heat signal in the data. Now, if we look at temperature anomalies, which is the difference compared to the 1981 to 2010 average temperature, we can see that the summer of 2003 in France was 3.25 degrees Celsius warmer than average. So, the question is, when will similar temperatures become a frequent, almost year-to-year -year occurrence? Well, the graph makes it very clear to see. So by the 2070s, under a high carbon emission scenario, a summer like the one in 2003 could be seen every year, and beyond that, even warmer. And although the low emission scenario temperatures on average don't quite get there, they certainly will mean such extreme weather events will become more normal and more frequent. Now no matter what European country we click on, we can see the same warming trend so we can conclude that the extreme heat wave events that have been taking place in Europe recently, such as those in 2003, or even more recently last summer, are projected to become normal conditions by the 2070s. Thanks for watching, and we hope you're now really looking forward to giving the tool a go yourself.